You guys know, we cover a lot of the climate change stories here. We hear some different perspectives. Um, some are saying we have five years left. Some are saying, hey, 12 years, then we're going to reach the point of no return. Some are saying we have to just focus on adaptation. We're going to be able to adapt. We just have to focus on it and in the meantime, actually do something. Everybody's saying we have to do something, by the way. For, for people that are like, well, there's not complete consensus. In the, oh, of course there's not. Science is based on evidence and exploration and hypotheses and tests and experiments. Of course it's going to be an evolving thing. But the one thing they're saying with consensus is, A, climate change is real, it's happening, man is participating, and B, we got to fucking do something. We, gotta, we can't not do anything. We got to do something. Because even though we don't know exactly what the cost is going to be, we don't know exactly. We know that it's going to be significant and the cost of doing nothing uh, is way too severe and a gamble we ain't going to take. Anyway, all right, so here's something kind of freaking cool. Scientists have discovered a sea of fresh water under the ocean. Under the sea. They went past Sebastian the Grumpy Crab. They went past Merman, the mermaid who was really pissed off that his daughter wanted to be a human. They went past SpongeBob's pineapple. They went past all of that. And they went straight into a freshwater pocket. Let's see what's going on here. Scientists, all right, so the margins are kind of fucked up there. Let's see. Look at that. That's the sea. Do you ever just, like, the ocean itself just, and, and I know this is not doing it justice, but it isn't like, when you just think about the ocean, isn't it just mind blowing? Like, isn't it just completely humbling that this body of water, and we don't know, like, there's still so much of it that we, we don't know. Like, like, there's so, so much of it that we don't even have a clue what is down there. We don't have a clue, um, like, like, we've only touched a certain percentage of it, and we're still discovering things. We, we've discovered something right now. We've discovered fresh water pockets we didn't know about. So much of the ocean is completely untouched. Um, and we're destroying it. <laughs> Look at this big majestic thing. Let's put some fucking plastic up in there. Let, let, let's, let's put some plastic up in there, see what happens. And, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I'm getting a little hippy-dippy right now, but I just came from the ocean. I was just in uh, Cape Cod for a little while uh, because my fiancé is from there. So I was visiting her homeland with her, and it was my first time. I'd never been there before. It was my first time, um, and it was an incredible experience. Beautiful up there. If you ever get the chance, definitely go. Um, and just whenever I just go to the ocean, and I, I don't get to the ocean as much as I need to. I, I really don't. I live in Pasadena, which is a little far. Uh, it's still accessible, and, and me and my... Um, me and my fiance do make an effort to get to have beach days as often as we can. But uh, anyway, just the existence of the ocean, um, it blows my mind. Like, like whenever, you know, it's so soothing. There are so many studies out there that, that it's just, it's so good for people's emotional and physical health. Like swimming in the ocean is very healthy. Um, and it just, what it does to your psyche I, I don't understand people that don't like the ocean. Like, like, like I, I just, like, like I understand some people don't. Um, and some people, they're like, well, the sun is brutal. I burn easily. Look at me. Look, you think I don't burn easily? Look at me. I still love it. I'm just careful. I wear hats. I use umbrellas. Like, I'm careful. I, I time myself. I use sunscreen. All right, so anyway, there's the ocean, huh? Look, it's not doing it justice. All right, so thousands of years ago, glaciers covered much of the planet. I remember this from seventh grade science class. I didn't appreciate it as much then. So oceans receded as water froze in massive sheets of ice blanketing the North American continent, and then as the ice age ended, the glaciers melted. All right, so... The oceans rose, fresh water was trapped in sediments below the waves. Discovered while drilling for oil offshore in the 1970s, great, it's good to know that, that's what we were doing, 
Um, scientists thought those isolated pockets of fresh water were a curiosity. They may instead prove to be a parched world's newest f- source of fresh water. So, by measuring the way electromagnetic waves traveled through fresh and saline water, researchers mapped out freshwater reservoirs for the first time. It turns out the subterranean poles stretch for at least 50 miles off the U.S. Atlantic coast, containing vast shores of low salinity groundwater, about twice the volume of Lake Ontario. Wow! So these deposits begin about 600 feet below the seafloor and stretch for hundreds of miles. That rivals the size of even the largest terrestrial aquifer. So look at this. Here's what it looks like. Okay, so this is uh, this is Martha's Vineyard. This is Jersey. This is Atlantic City. Speaking of Springsteen, put your makeup on, fix your hair up pretty, meet me tonight in Atlantic City. And this is this is the freshwater pocket that they were able to measure. So it is even more than Lake Ontario stretches for hundreds of miles. We have all this fresh water. And I bet people are wondering, how can we privatize this? How can we privatize this? Somebody tweeted at me. They're like, I bet they're going to wonder how Nestle can sell this and make money off of it. (laughs) Um, And yeah, that's probably the case. But, you know, this is just one of those things. If we can find this stuff, if we can map this stuff out, and, and there's still all these amazing things about the ocean that we're still discovering, we can't fucking renew like like we can't reinvigorate the way we do things and more be more sustainable with our energy we can't we can't get off of fossil fuels we can't of course we can do all these things we can we can do all these things we can get off fossil fuels we can invest in solar and wind we can completely reinvigorate the way we do infrastructure the way we do transportation we can do it And you know what comes with all this? Jobs. Sustainable fucking jobs. That's why, you know, you're going to hear from Andrew Yang tonight. That's why a jobs guarantee, a universal jobs guarantee is better than a UBI. Because we do have the demand for it. We have the demand for infrastructure, for a Green New Deal, for green energy. And it would come with many jobs. So isn't that amazing? We just discovered all this fresh water. We didn't even know it was there. 600 feet below. They found it. They found it. There's, there's speculation out there that we might have had more significant aquacultures. Meaning there, there, there's speculation out there. They found certain tools. And this was recent. This was only about 10 years ago. They found some tools that indicated that people may have been pretty much living on the water. Like, they might have been pretty much living, like, in the water, basically. Maybe to stay cool, and they might have built, you know, like, like sustainable housing on the water. They had a, more of an aquaculture than we realized. And some people are speculating, as time went on, that's where the myth of the mermaid came from. The myth of the mermaid came from, there were actually some civilizations of people kind of living like that. In a way, I'm sure they weren't actually under the water or whatever i mean obviously i mean we don't know of any humans that were able to survive without oxygen um but i mean that's incredible get your news on with ronda do you want to know what's going on we're getting our news on today get your news on with ronda do you want to know what's going on we're getting our news on today yeah Go through it together and make it our own. Get your 